we we almost have the same name. Almost. I know that's why I was like immediately <laughs> let's do this let's do this talk, <laughs> which is amazing. It's amazing. It's nice cool. to meet you, Brian Kluger, Ryan Kruger, right? <laughs> cool. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. And you're from where again? Uh, so I'm based in Cape Town, uh, South Africa. South Africa. Are you Jewish? I am. I am too. Aha. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Maybe maybe we are brothers. You must be Tommy. Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got a hug. I think we are. What's up, everyone? I'm Brian Kluger, and we have a fantastic show today. We have a legendary intercontinental champion of filmmaking, acting, and music all the way from South Africa, Ryan Kruger. Welcome to the show. Hey, man. How's it going? It's going extremely well. So glad to have you on the show. It's amazing that we almost have the same name. <laughs> <laughs> Very close. I it's feel like, like it's, it's, almost, it's almost like if somebody was drunk and couldn't pronounce my name or vice versa, that's what they would say. Get away from me. All right. Right, right. And if David Letterman <laughs> came on the show, he would constantly be joking, Brian Kluger, Ryan Kruger. Uma? Oprah? <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to talk about all sorts of movies and music, your latest film, Fried Berry. But first, let's start at the very beginning. Where did it all begin for you? in film was it something you watched on vhs as a kid late at night where did it where did it all begin for you yeah i think you know as a kid growing up in the 80s it was just one of those yeah it was just one of those things where yeah i just constantly watched films and probably introduced you know uh, by my dad that you know we just i just constantly watched films so i mean by the time like the like um you know, the late 90s came, I, I saw a majority of like 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and uh, early 90s, you know, uh, uh, movies. So yeah, it's always been a definitely a thing in my household for films, but it's also one of those things where I think, uh, you know, when you were a kid and kids, kids won't get this now, but like when you were a kid and your dad would, uh, your mom and dad would, would take you to the, the, the video shop or you should I say your dad would take you to the video shop because your mom wouldn't go because she knows that you're going to be in there for hours. And it was one of those things where, you know, you go into that video shop and your dad says, all right, uh, you know, it's Friday night, Saturday night, we can, you know, rent a video out. And you'd spend hours and hours in there and you'd look at all the like the 80s cool horror, um, you know, uh, video boxes and stuff. And then you'd look at each one and you'd be like, okay, should I get this one and this one? And you know, if you've got a brother or a sister, you know, we would fight of which one that we're, you know, that we were going to take. And then the best thing was when your dad said, all right, you can get two. And then you'd <laughs> just be in there for like even longer. So yeah, that was, that was, I used to love that as a kid. Yeah. Do you remember like that moment when there's like get two? Do you remember which two movies at one point you were like, okay, double yeah. feature right here? Yeah, oh, it would I don't know. It would, it would, I mean, I basically lived in the uh, the video shop, so it was good. yeah, it was just constantly because there, there was all those films that you. Uh, it was the artwork, you know, it was yeah. the artwork of those 80s, uh, like horror films and any 80s films, but especially those like 80s horror films where you'd, you'd look at the, you know, the cover and you didn't even, to be honest, like a lot of the time when I was a kid, I didn't even read the back. I was just like, I'm going to watch that. That looks awesome. Right. Was it was it. Like, like Evil Dead 2, like the, the skeleton looking sideways yeah. at you or demons or something yeah. like that. All, all I, I'm there with you. Did you used to make... Uh, like home videos, directed home videos. Like yeah, yeah, like my, like my childhood was very much like uh, you know that movie um, uh, Super Eight. And action. It was, yes, it was it was very much like that. Like in the summer or weekends, me and my friends we would uh, go out and you know we would just make all these movies. I must have made like three hundred of them. I've still got like them all. Like it's what it's was funny, uh, it's funny to look back on. What was the uh, what was the equipment? What was the cam video camcorder you used, and what was the it title was, of your first one? Um, I can't remember the. I don't even know if the first one had a title. I can't even remember. But the 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 uh, the camera I used to shoot on 
was called it was a JVC video movie camera. Yes. So when I got that, I was like, because it said video movie, you were like, oh, it's it's a it's like a movie camera. <laughs> it was still shit. It was still terrible. But the cool thing about this uh, camera was that the difference between other normal video cameras that you used, to, you used to get is that it used to have a flicker switch on the top, which was like a splice for editing. So you would shoot what you'd want to shoot, and then you'd do playback, watch it, and then it'll get to the point where you want it to cut, and then you would slide that thing across. So you would edit them. You would have to make the movie in order, but you can edit as you go along. But the back, the, that's, which was really cool, but apart from that, if you started making mistakes on that second scene, you're losing the time and you keep cutting and going back and going back. So if you go too far back, you're going to have to redo the other scene. But that, I, I thought it was a great, great camera at the time just to, you know, just to shoot all these like little movies with, you know. No, oh, that's amazing. I'm glad you, you remembered that. Uh, <laughs> and you went to school for film, am I correct? Uh, yeah, so I studied... Um, uh, I studied in South Africa um, at the after film school. That's and so I think uh, teachers and professors are vital to creativity. Was there ever a piece of advice you got from a teacher or professor that has helped your help shape your creative life? I'm going to sound really bad now. <laughs> Say no, <laughs> because because you know, don't get me wrong. Like the like when when you see when I went to film school, I already made tons of short films i already made music videos already do, done all that and you know there was there is definitely there was definitely good lectures there at the film school but it's also for me it's one of those things where it's like you know if um sometimes it comes down to personal opinion you know and some of the lecturers they never even made stuff you know they were probably in film school and then you know those who can't teach those that can't do teach and those that can't teach teach gym <laughs> so then they're sitting there and then you know they were sitting there and i, I would uh, like you, you know we'd screen the movie and then they say oh we think you should take out that because uh, they've got to say something to you and then i'd be like yeah but if you take out this then this doesn't make sense you take out that then the character's not strong enough and, I, and then I would, I would sit there going this is fucking stupid. Like it's stupid. And it comes down to personal opinion. And I, I always think what well, a really good, we would never be able to do this, but this would, this is would what would be really interesting. So let's take Tarantino or Christopher Nolan or whoever, like Spike Lee or whatever. If you got that script, their brand new script that every single film that they do is like successful. And you gave that to your lecturer and let him mark that script. <laughs> I guarantee you, they would rip it apart. And they would say, this doesn't work. This is not going to happen. So yeah, I mean, it's each to their own. And yeah, it's it's all about, it's personal opinion, you know? Yeah. Fry Barry as well. It's one of those films where I knew what I was making. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. I know that you. it's one of those films, you either love it or you hate it. You either get it or you don't. And that's what's right. cool about it. And, you know, when somebody doesn't like it, it's all right. It's cool. Like It's, it's like my uncle, he wanted to watch, the, it was playing at a festival in Johannesburg and he wanted to watch it. I'm like, you're not going to like it. And he goes, no, you know, I would like to see what you're doing and I'd like to watch it. And he'd be like, and I was like, okay, but you're not going to like it. And then he watched it and then he was chatting to my dad over the phone. And my dad said, so what, what did you think of Ryan's film? And he was like, oh, it was terrible. <laughs> and then I laughed. And then I said, hey, why are you saying my film shit? And he's like, started backpedaling like the whole time. Yeah. But I, but I said, it's all right. You are the, he's like, so um, he's the furthest away target market that you could imagine, you know? Like, well, he's like very conservative. No, no, I, I like that you said that. Um, to, to go back, I like what you said that there was no advice, but maybe the advice would be to throw your throw someone's self into the filmmaking aspect themselves, put into the dive in and let them learn through doing. And that's yeah. a it's a cool one. And yeah, it's yeah. that's the, the best way you're gonna learn. And that's why I always say to filmmakers, you know, starting out and stuff is there's nothing better than getting experience on set or you know, shooting. That's better than any film school. It's better than any book that you can read. Like being on set and actually 
seeing how a set works i mean that that's that experience is is priceless you know it is it is and then you know through all your acting through like the incredible doomsday movie and all of this it led to fried berry which after watching i thought to myself this is the ultimate badass movie of the age old question if you had 24 hours left to live what would you do and, and it's this movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a good way of looking at it yeah so i mean it's we, this... we probably wouldn't survive the first uh 20 minutes with all the drugs that we're taking <laughs> right 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 and the uh lead actor gary green who plays barry i have to know how did you meet this man in life and was he just immediately just as amazing as he is on film <laughs> so I met Gary on like a student movie, probably about like uh, 11, 11, 12 years ago. And like, uh, for me, I'm a big fan of, uh, of characters, you know, mm -hmm. people that, that just look interesting. And I knew as soon as I met Gary, I was like, shit, this guy looks scary as fuck. <laughs> and he looks, he just looks really like interesting. He's just got this amazing face. And then over the years, I put him in like music videos and little featured parts and stuff like that. And it, you know, it just grew to that point that, you know, eventually the first proper project that we did together was the three minute experimental uh, Fry Barry. And yeah, and then fr from there, you know, obviously I, I knew that Gary was, you know, 100% right to, to uh, you know, to do the feature. But the interesting thing about Gary is that he isn't a trained actor. So that being said, you know, what's, what's interesting about the movie is that his character like mimics all these people. He's like a kid, he's like a sponge, you know, as he's meeting people. And then when it came to directing, it was quite ironic because at the same time I was on the other side, uh, you know, I was on the side of the camera uh, saying to Gary, you know, copy my face, now do this, now do that. And I'm busy doing that because I'm editing the movie in my head. So I know what's gonna cut and, and different reactions that I need. And, you know, before we started filming, Gary knew what the, you know, what the film was about and the character, but I didn't want him to pre uh, rehearse or, or, you know, preempt anything. So he didn't know what we were doing until, you know, uh, 30, 40 minutes before shooting, because I needed to, because he's not a trained actor, I, I needed to have that clean slate every single day and to get exactly what I want out of him because the movie relies on 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 Gary the the, the movie relies on uh, on this character so yeah it was a very interesting thing where a lot of the other actors you know I did a lot of improv with them but yeah with Gary you know I didn't want him to do any improv I had to be super super strict uh, to get exactly what I wanted in the right tone you know of of the movie but that being said Gary is uh, he did an amazing job and we had so much fun and he trusted me and we yeah it was just it, it, there, there's he was born to do this job you know to do yeah. this film he, he is this character you know agreed agrees this seems like a, a fun guy to hang out with uh in real life for sure um so he's my gym buddy we can no. go to the gym together <laughs> okay good 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 uh i have a serious question for you um okay. if you're all right with that uh, yeah. my serious question is why is flight of the navigator in the movie the explorers from the 80s some of the most entertaining and fun films why are they yes <laughs> that's that's why 80s films are the best like 80s films <laughs> are the best it's that feel and that tone and it's just i i, I think we've lost in cinema, we've lost, uh, like, listen, like cinema develops and things get better and everything, but there's those certain films from a certain time that is just the lighting, the feel, the tone, you know, there's, they're just like fucking, you know, cinematic, you know, great films. And I think we've lost, don't you ever like watch films now in the, you know, from the eighties and you watch them and you go, they just don't make movies like this anymore. Oh yeah, of you know, course, of course. They just, they just don't make movies like this anymore. And back in the eighties, it was like 80% in camera, 20% visual effects. That is completely the other way around now. You know what I mean? It's 80% visual effects and 20% uh, uh, in camera. That's it, it's, it's crazy. And 
And if something doesn't look real, then I'm like, what is it? And that's why I try to do everything in camera, prosthetics, uh, animatronics or whatever. And there's that creepiness and feel to it. And when you look at movies like The Thing or The Fly or Aliens, it's just like, yeah. It's, it's, it's awesome. better. Can't it's be better. It. You know, I'm glad you did that with Fried Berry. Uh, and my last question for you, I would love to have you back on the show again to have a much longer conversation of movies and music. But my last question for you now is, I'm going to put you on the spot. Are there mm -hmm. any certain scenes in movies that have always stuck with you? For instance, like when you wake up in the morning, you go, oh, fuck, that scene has inspired me to go out and work and do this. That's why I love movies. Any certain scenes? Um, oh, I, I don't know. Not, I can't, I can't think of one at the top of my head. What one, one film that did, one scene that did st st stick with me for the, the wrong reasons was when I watched The Fly when I was a kid and his body parts were starting to fall off and stuff. And in the The mirror cabinet in the in the bathroom. I remember my brother saying to me, "Is dicks in the jar? Is dicks in the glass?" And I, all I could think of when I was a kid, going, oh "My God, is dicks in the glass? It's like it's fallen off," and that and that that haunted me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good that one. It. That's a great one. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put that scene in this video. <laughs> But uh, hopefully next time we can get together, we can talk more and we'll, uh, we'll elaborate yeah, on be great. the scenes. But uh, congratulations on the film. I loved it uh, and wish you the best with it. And we'll talk soon. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me, man. Yeah, have a good one. Yeah, I love you being buddy. What do you all like about you, Barry? You don't say much. You're a good listener. You're absolutely fucking right, you're not the father. You're a useless piece of shit. So what are you doing here, man? How did they catch you? Yeah! You did something bad. Kill someone. What my husband are you? You're more important than us. You have to save yourself. What is your name? That's a big one. Wow. You're a big boy. Oh, <sighs>